Welcome back to our super simple farming game. Today we're going to fix some of the problems. We're able to select our different icons here. And if we have the seeds selected, we can plant our seeds. But we have a lot of other stuff that's broken. For instance, when we harvest these carrots, we don't actually get any carrots because this harvest function, I've commented these out because they were giving us an error because we don't have these global variables anymore. So what we're going to have to do is make it so when we pick up a carrot out of the ground, it actually adds a carrot to our inventory. But we're not using these global variables, so we're going to have to use our new way of doing inventory stuff, which is a table full of tables, and each table has properties. So what we're going to need to do is search through our inventory table and see if we have carrots. We can do that by searching for the name carrots, and then we can change the amount of that table. So let's do it this way. We can use a for loop. So let's say for i for item in all inventory do if i dot name equals carrots, then i dot amount plus equals one. That's pretty simple. So let's hit save and run and let's switch over to our seeds, plant a couple patches here and I'll switch over to our carrots so that we can see how many carrots we have here in our little debug menu. And now as I go and pick up the carrots, it adds one to the carrots. Yay. Okay. We can do a similar thing with the seeds if we want to, but I think for now I'll just leave it as carrots. When you pick a carrot out of the ground, you get a carrot. Not that hard. So the other thing that's broken is we can't buy or sell anything. When we go over here, none of this works anymore because we messed up a bunch of stuff. That's how game dev works. The main thing is that we were coming over here and hitting Z to sell uh, or the, you know, the O button for Pico 8, the circle button for Pico 8. But now we're using that to step through our inventory. And so we're going to have to use X, but there's going to be problems with, you know, if we have something selected, we sell that automatically. If How do we buy something that we don't have in our inventory? So we're going to have to have some kind of little menu that pops up here. And fortunately, that's a pretty easy process. Let's go ahead and make that. I'm going to make a new tab and we'll just call this menus. And let's break this out into three main functions. So function I menu, function D menu, U menu. Okay. And we're going to make sure to call these two in our main loop. So under inventory, we'll say menu, U menu, and D menu like that. So now those will actually be called. And let's just draw this first. This is going to be a little rectangle. And so let's say a rect fill and let's do this like 30 comma 30 for our upper left corner. And then we'll do maybe 50 comma 50 and what color, maybe like maybe color two, save and run. So that adds a little menu here. We don't want this quite there. Let's bring this up a lot. So let's make this like 10 and 30. Yeah, so there's a little menu there. Maybe move it over just a touch, 32, 52. So now a little menu pops up there. We'll probably change that, but something like that. And let's just have a little text menu that pops up and let's do that from a table as well. And so we'll just call this a menu table like this and we'll have a couple items here. Let's say um, buy comma sell. So now we pretty much just have a list of a couple options here and let's just make a loop here. Let's say uh, for i in for i equals one comma and let's count how many items are in the menu table do and let's look up menu table one. Let's just say let's print print menu table i. So that's going to print each item but we need to offset it. And so let's just say uh, 32 comma 11. And that's going to be the upper left hand corner of our menu. Let's add like plus, I don't know, seven times I. Then we need to give it a color. Let's give it color seven. And let's take seven away from this 11. Let's make this like three or four. Okay, let's see if this works. Yes, look at that. So the reason this is working is we are printing the item in our menu table based on this number that's going up for each loop, okay? So the first time this is gonna be menu table one, which is gonna be by, and this i is also gonna be one. So it's four plus seven, that's going to be at 11 on the y axis. The next time it loops through, it's going to look up cell, menu table two, and then this is gonna be two. So it's gonna be down seven more pixels. And so that's how we get these to kind of offset. And that's also the reason why we're doing this with this i equals one to the count of menu table instead of doing for i in all menu table, because we don't have this loop number and it makes it easier to offset things when you have that loop number. So hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments. So let's take a look at this. That looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's move these both over just a touch. Let's do this like 33, save run. Yeah. So now we have a little bit of space here on the left, but how do we select these? We need to have some kind of selection going. So let's just draw a little color behind these words. 
And so we'll do that before we write the words. So rect, let's just make this almost the same thing, rect fill like this, but we're not going to make it quite as wide. So let's take this to like 50 and it's not gonna be as tall. Let's make this like seven, save run. And we want this a different color. Let's make this this blue color, color 12 for now. So now we have this blue, we gotta size that right. This is gonna be 11, this will be like 16 or something. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea. Let's actually make this 10 and make this nine. So we have a little bit of space around it. And same thing here, let's make this over one there. So now we have a nice little selection box here. Yeah, so now we have by selected, but this menu doesn't mean anything at all right now. It's just the UI. We don't, ha this doesn't tell our game anything. So we'll need to tell our game what to select and then what to do when we select it. So let's just at least get the movement of this menu working in this video. So we'll need some kind of menu select kind of variable. And so let's just say menu select equals one. And we'll also need to have some way to step through that menu and have the menu appear. <laughs> so let's go over to our player thing. And here in the bottom of our else, where we're testing with mget to see what tile we're on. Sort of towards at the bottom, we have this part that tests if we're on those store tiles. So let's just make a variable and let's just set menu toggle equals true. We're gonna start out with this being false and let's just set this in our init for our menu. And so let's just say uh, if menu toggle, if menu toggle equals false, then we turn it to true, else menu toggle equals false. So that's just going to turn our menu off and on and we're only going to have this appear if menu toggle is true. So if, if menu toggle, then we do all this stuff, save run. Now we go over here and if we hit X, bloop, our menu comes up. If I hit X again, it goes away. Now, even though our menu's up, I can still move my guy around. So we need to make sure that we're not in menu mode when we're moving around. So at the top of our player controls here, let's just wrap this movement in an if statement. So if not menu toggle, then, so now we can go up here and hit X and now I can't move until I turn that menu off. So that's good. Now we need to have our arrows actually move our selection. So let's have that happen here in our update menu. Let's just say if button P down, then menu cell equals or plus equals one. Um, we also need to limit that. So if menu cell is less than the count of menu table, then we do that else menu cell equals one. That's going to make sure that it loops back around and we're going to do a similar thing for up. So we'll just say else, else if button P equal is up. Then we're going to say minus equals one. We're going to make sure this is greater than one. And if not, the menu cell equals the count of menu table. So that, that'll make sure that it goes to the last item. Let's go ahead and print menu selection. And just to test this out before we get too deep, let's just print menu cell here. And let's do that right at the corner of our menu in white. So if we go over here to X and I hit up and down, it goes either one or two. So that's good. Now we just need to move that highlighter to show what the heck we're doing. So we either have one or two, and we're gonna offset this rectangle by that. So we're gonna do this pretty much the same way that we did with this print thing, where we're adding seven times I here. We're actually just going to add, let's say plus seven times menu cell, and we'll just make this three. And we'll also do this for this one here, our other Y. So let's take away seven from this, nine times seven times nine plus seven times menu cell. See how that works over here to X. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> so now we have the working menu. If we hit X, it closes the menu and opens the menu. We can select with up and down. We can even add another thing to our table and it shouldn't break. So we'll call this uh, trade, save run. And if we go up here and hit X, we have buy, sell, trade, and we can loop through all of those. So we can make a huge menu if we want to. Granted, we'll have to figure out sizing and everything, but we can add more options and nothing's kind of hard coded in. It's just going to adjust to the size of the menu. In fact, we could even make this rectangle adjust to the size of the menu too, which is pretty neat. We could do that really easily. So this rect fill, we kind of do the same thing. This bottom number, we could just say seven times the count of menu table, and maybe it'd be like two plus seven times the menu table, save run. See how that works. And we need to add one to that count. Let's try that. Yeah. 
So now that's going to dynamically change based on how many things we have in our table here. So if we only have two, that's going to make a small menu. But if we have 15, you know, three, four, five, six, boop, we'll have a really long menu. That's so cool. Check that out. All right. So now we have a really nice menu set up and we can figure out what we have selected and we can adjust multiple different things uh, based on that later. But right now we can toggle that menu. We can select things and uh, we're on our way. This is very exciting. By the way, if you're just getting into Pico 8, make sure to check out my Pico 8 study guide. This is a nice little PDF that teaches you kind of the basics of how tables work and how all these kind of really essential little things work for coding in Pico 8. It's a great little tool, very useful, totally free. Make sure to check that out. There's a link in the description below. So I hope you've had fun. Let me know what's next for this game in the comments. I would love to hear any kind of feedback you have. And yeah, thanks for watching.